Kakadosh Boker Tov, we're just going to continue Shavuot Tov, we're just continuing with the Alachot of Shavuot. We'll just mention that from the beginning of Rosh Chodesh Sivan until minimum of the 12th or 13th or 14th, we do not do Tacharunim. Now why exactly? So we said we were going to mention it, we said on Erev Shabbat, we said we were going to mention it today. So we'll bring down the poskim exactly what's going on. So here the Gaud Maminyot brings down that there's a minhag not to say the Tacharunim three days before Shavuot because of the concept of Shloshet Yemei Agbala. Heyu Nechonim Lishloshet Yemei that we're going to read on Parashat Yitro B'chodesh HaShelishi on the first day of Shavuot, which means that they had to prepare themselves for the Chag of Shavuot. And therefore, since they're preparing themselves on the Chag of Shavuot three days, so therefore it comes out that obviously Rosh Chodesh, which is going to be Aleph, you do not do Tacharunim. And now the Shoshet Yemei Agbala, if Shavuot is going to be Vav Sivan, so you have He, Dalid, and Gimel, that you don't have Tacharunim. So therefore, on the third, fourth, and fifth, of Sivan, you don't have Tachronim. Anyway, on the 6th of Sivan, you don't do it, right? which is going to be Erev, right? the concept of the Shavuot. So therefore, you have the beginning part of Sivan that you're not going to be doing Tachronim. And that's brought down whether it's going to be a God of Nyot, the Tashpits and the Sivan Minagim also brings down that you're, you're not going to say it until the 8th of the day, and the 8th is included, Vechule Vechule. Okay, fine. Now what happens is, is that the Ramah brings down that you don't do it from Rosh Chodesh Sivan until Shavuot, which means that even though technically the, the bet didn't have a reason, but they just said if right now you have from the beginning and you're not going to not do Tachronim one day, and then right you're going to do Tachronim one day and then skip out again for the rest. So therefore they did it from Rosh Chodesh Sivan until Shavuot. Now what happens after Shavuot? So after Shavuot, obviously the day afterwards is Yisru Chag, Obviously, you're not going to do Tachronim like any other type of an Isru Chag, that you don't do Tachronim. However, though, there's a Shubin Yamin Zaev and Rabbeinu Yoel Levi, and they bring down like this. They say, since there's Tashlumin for the Korbanot for seven days, which means we know that on every single Chag, if you didn't bring the Korban, whether it's going to be the Olat Riyah or the Shalmei Chagiga on the first day of the Chag, you have seven days, Lachgoget Chag. What does that mean? You have seven days to continue you're able to come and bring the korbanot. So therefore he comes and he says, so therefore what happens is since you're doing seven days after Shavuot, so therefore if you have the six plus seven, so you're going to come and you're going to have until the 12th, it comes out, what do you go, are you going to do it on the 13th or not? Now what happens is, is that they bring down, the Rav Chida brings down also, and now the question is, okay fine, so you're not going to do it seven days afterwards. So now what happens is, is that you would say it on the 13th. But there's a Shiurei Knesset Lula that says that in Chutz Aretz, we do not do it because of Sveka Diyoma. What does it mean? For us, since we do the, the 6th and the 7th in Chutz Aretz, meaning we do an extra day of Yom Tov. So since we do an extra day of Yom Tov, so therefore you add an extra day that you're not doing Tacharonim because of the 7 days of Korban Olad afterwards. Obviously in Eretz Yisrael that there's no Sveka Diyoma, obviously you wouldn't do that, right? But again, there's this different Minagim that is actually brought down. The Rambam also says, Yom Tov Shel Atzeret, they never made it into a safek, and therefore technically you would do it. But again, so therefore there was a, a minhag, right, that they wouldn't do it also as well. So because of that, it actually comes out, also the Shut Vayom in Yitzchak, right, and others, other places as well, that they do bring down that the minhag was not to do it also on the 13th. So therefore, minimum it comes out that we don't do it on the 13th. The Chalabim, they have another reason why they don't do it on the 13th. It's because that since they finished right until the 12th, the 13th they should have done it. But there was a special miracle that happened right amongst the Kilot of Chalab. And because of that miracle, therefore on the 13th they also don't do it. It's not because of the Sveika Diyoma, it's another reason. But now what happens on the 14th? So the 14th is actually, there is one Shita brought down. It was a Haga'ot. Right, that, uh, that on uh, Rabbi Yitzchak ben Wali, that they come and they make a calculation how many days a year do you do Tacharunim. And basically, what they want to do is that according to the calculation, you don't do it also on the 14th because basically you're taking it one day after the Yisru Chag. And therefore, what happens is they don't do it as well. Again, obviously, every single Keilah they have their Minagim. In Eretz Yisrael, the majority they do it until the 12th and then the 13th they already do it. Here in Chutz Aretz, right, it all depends which are the Minagim. We don't do it on the 13th. Chalabim don't do it on the 13th. Yerushalmin would probably do it on the 13th. And then again, the 14th, there is some minhag, right, that they won't do it. But again, the most, the most prevalent custom is until the 13th, and then on the 14th, they would start Tacharunim again.